introduction, deaf, deaf, hard of hearing. Deafblind Information Australia acknowledge the traditional owners of the lands on which this presentation was recorded. We pay respect to their elders past, present and emerging, and deaf and hard of hearing community members. Welcome to Deafblind Information Australia's training video series made possible by an NDIS Information Linkages and Capacity Building or ILC grant. My name is Melanie Robartson. This module is titled Deaf, Deaf, Hard of Hearing. The first deaf has a capital D, the second deaf has a lowercase d. Project Officers. It was developed by myself and Emily McDonald, Project Officers and Deafblind Consultants. I am a practicing speech pathologist and Emily a practicing occupational therapist. Training Modules. This video is part of an introductory series to deaf blindness and along with the module Introduction to Vision Impairment is designed to lead into an exploration of topics in deaf blindness. Module Overview. It explores deaf terminology, hearing levels, detection of hearing loss and the impact of deafness. Terminology. Let's start with some terminology. Using the best term in any given situation made me pause for thought. Terminology choices are influenced by societal and individual values, beliefs and preferences. What terms can I use? With the lower case D, the term deaf and hard of hearing was agreed upon in 2013 by the World Federation of the Capital D Deaf and the International Federation of, the, of Hard of Hearing People where both organisations agreed to recognise the term deaf with the lowercase d as referring to the general physical condition of not hearing and the term hard of hearing, which refers to those who have a hearing loss and usually communicate using, lip, uh, using speech, lip reading, residual hearing and often technology to assist hearing. It also includes people with other hearing related diagnoses, such as those with auditory processing disorders, these individuals operate primarily within the hearing community and culture. What terms can I use? Deaf, capital D. Another important term to understand is deaf with a capital D. This is used to refer to those people who identify as members of the signing deaf community and have knowledge of and respect for deaf identity, culture and language. Members of this community can be hearing and might include hearing children of deaf adults, sign language interpreters and other hearing sign language users. The term deaf gain, being the opposite to hearing loss, has emerged to counteract the preconception that deafness is a loss or disability. Can I use this one? Can you use the term hearing impaired? This term is rejected by the deaf community and many others. However, it's still, it's currently widely used as an alternative term for hard of hearing. Deaf and hard of hearing. Capital D deaf and hard of hearing is currently the accepted term to refer to people with any degree of deafness or hearing loss. Ear anatomy and hearing. Here we have a diagram of the ear. This diagram shows parts of the ear, starting from the visible fleshy part of the ear called the pinna, the hole or tunnel that goes inside your head is the external auditory canal. This leads to the eardrum, also termed the tympanic membrane, pictured here in green. These parts of the ear make up the outer ear. The middle ear is a space that contains three tiny bones, the malleus, incus and stapes. These bones move as sound hits the eardrum. The inner ear consists of the cochlear and semicircular canals pictured here in blue. The two nerves connecting these structures to the brain are pictured in yellow. The stapes bone joins to the cochlea and vibrates the fluid inside the cochlea. This in turn vibrates the tiny hairs inside the cochlea. The movement of the hairs creates a type of electrical signal. Signals from the hair cells travel along the cochlear nerve pictured here as the lower of the two yellow nerves. The brain interprets these signals and we experience this as sound. 
The semicircular canals also contain fluid. The fluid levels change as the head moves. Signals about the fluid levels in the canals travel along the vestibular nerve to the brain, pictured here as the upper of the two nerves. The brain uses this information to help it know how the head is positioned and to help keep balance. Some people with hearing loss may have difficulty with balance because this system may have also been affected. Hearing loss, ear to brain. An audiologist is a professional trained to assess hearing levels and types of hearing loss. They also prescribe and program hearing technologies. Different hearing levels result from differences in various parts of the ear, the nerves or the brain, or be a mixture of these. A conductive loss is the term used when sound is prevented from traveling through the outer or middle part of the ear. A sensory neural loss originates from differences or damage to the cochlea and the hair cells in the cochlea. A mixed loss usually refers to a combination of conductive and sensory neural loss. Auditory neuropathy is a hearing difficulty resulting from the way sound travels from the ear to the brain. Speech perception is usually poorer than hearing levels would predict and some show no hearing loss. Sound may fade in and out or seem out of sync. Usually transmis transmission of sound past the inner ear is affected. Auditory processing disorder is a term indicating that sound is processed by the brain in an atypical way. An audiologist with import from a wider team of professionals is responsible for diagnosing auditory neuropathies and auditory processing disorders. Tinnitus is experienced as ringing sounds or other noises in the ears or head when no such external physical noise is present. The actual mechanisms or processes of tinnitus are not fully understood. It is not a type or cause of hearing loss but is often experienced by people with hearing loss and can be quite distressing for some. An audiologist can assist in the management of tinnitus. People without hearing loss may also experience tinnitus. Levels loss. Hearing levels are currently described in terms of levels of loss ranging from normal through mild, moderate, severe and profound. Pictured here is a graph that shows loudness of sound on the left. The sound in decibel increases as you move down the graph, with minus 10 decibels at the top, moving down to the louder sounds. The graph stops at 120 decibels. This is the opposite to a way, the way a graph usually works, but is how hearing is mapped onto a graph or audiogram. Decibels, usually written as dB, lowercase d, uppercase B, are a measure of pressure, which is experienced as intensity of sound, or what we might call softness and loudness. Across the top of the graph is the pitch measured in Hertz, abbreviated to capital H, Z. On the left are the lower, lower or deeper, the, the deeper sounds moving to the right as pitch increases. The top band on this graph is white and represents the area of no hearing loss. This is considered to be a hearing level that allows you to hear speech and sounds for spoken language development, comfortable for conversation, safety and awareness of what's in the environment without the need to look. As you move down the graph, you move into the regions of increasing levels of hearing loss represented in this particular diagram by bands of light gray through darker grays as the hearing loss increases. The softer sound a human is thought to be able to hear is within the um, minus 10 to zero decibel range. Sounds at 120 decibels have the potential to damage hearing immediately. Prolonged exposure at 70 decibels has the potential to damage hearing. This graph also has speech sounds scattered across the top third of the graph, sitting in a shape that is curved up like a banana. The graph also contains images of objects that make sounds. They are placed on the graph according to the loudness and pitch of the sounds they make. With a mild loss, a person can hear many things, but for example, not a clock ticking, 
leaves rustling or some speech sounds like With a moderate loss, access to speech sounds is further reduced. A person is likely to struggle to understand speech without a hearing device, especially when there are other sounds in the background. A person with a severe loss will hear machinery and vehicles with big engines. They may or may not hear a dog bark, piano playing, telephone ringing. They hear little or no speech sounds. With a profound loss, a person is likely to hear a helicopter and chainsaw, especially if those things can be seen. They cannot hear speech. Hearing Australia currently subscribes to the following levels of hearing loss. Mild loss is greater than 21 to 40 decibels. Moderate loss, 41 to 60 decibels. Severe loss, 61 to 80 decibels and severe to profound loss, 81 to 90 decibels. Profound loss, 91 decibels and over. World Health Organization. The World Health Organization uses the following classification. Slight to mild loss, 26 to 40 decibels. Moderate loss in children, 31 to 60 decibels. Moderate loss in adults, 41 to 60 decibels, severe loss, 61 to 80 decibels, and profound loss, over 81 decibels. Differences in hearing loss ranges. However, there is some variation in hearing loss descriptions according to age bracket, what agency is reporting on it, and their reasons for assessing hearing. Sound perception, mild. So let's revisit sound and speech perception again. In general, without hearing technology to assist a person with mild loss, has trouble hearing and understanding soft speech, speech from a distance or speech in background noise. With a moderate loss, a person will have difficulty hearing regular speech, even at close distances. This may affect language development, interaction with peers and self-esteem. Sound perception, severe. With a severe loss, a person may hear only very loud speech or loud environmental sounds, such as a siren or a door slamming. Most conversational speech is not heard. With a profound loss, a person may perceive loud sounds as vibration. If this is an acquired lo loss, speech and language may deteriorate. With these descriptions, it is easier to understand why a person with a hearing loss can still respond to people talking and turn to or notice some sounds. It also explains why sometimes in quieter environments, they can hear things that they can't hear in busier or noisier environments. People with hearing loss may also use other senses to notice and respond to things that make sound or to people speaking to them which can seem as if they have heard and understood. What is an audiogram? An audiogram is a diagram or graph that maps a person's hearing levels according to what pitch of sound can be heard at what loudness. Audiograms can also include other hearing information like pressure in the ear and speech perception measures. The audiogram picture here is similar to the previous graph with decibels on the left, increasing in loudness as you move downwards. Across the top from the left, pitch increases. Each ear's hearing is mapped onto the graph by a series of dots joined together by a line. The red line maps the hearing for the right ear. The blue line maps the hearing for the left ear. To help you remember which is which, R for red, R for right ear. You can overlay the audiogram onto the previous graph to help you determine what is within the range of this person's hearing. Sounds above the red line cannot be heard by the right ear, and sounds above the blue line cannot be heard by the left ear. This particular audiogram has a red and blue line running diagonally from the top left, sloping down towards the bottom right of the graph. 
You would expect this person to hear running water and a good portion of speech sounds, but may not hear the phone ringing, have trouble following conversation, especially in background noise, and may turn the TV up quite loud. What does it sound like? Simulators recreate an experience of hearing loss by removing certain sounds from a sound recording. They may indicate, but not replicate exactly, any one person's experience of hearing loss. They are useful for helping build insight into the conditions that help or hinder hearing, the fatigue a person with hearing loss may experience, and the mixed success with hearing and recognising certain sounds and words. The icon shown on this slide is for the iPad app Hearing Loss Simulator by Starkey Hearing Technologies. Detecting hearing loss. The signs that someone has a hearing loss can be different at different ages. When observing behaviour, it can be difficult to tell whether someone is reacting to sound or other things in the environment they have learned they need to respond to. For example, a child may turn their head to someone calling their name. However, they may have turned because they felt the vibrations of that person walking on the floor and have learnt they need to turn to look at a person when they enter the room. Rather than hearing the spoken words, a person may be following an instruction by looking at the gesture and eye gaze of the person giving the instruction and using knowledge of the situation to help them understand. Signs of hearing loss, infant or toddler. For an infant or toddler, these may include no reaction to loud sounds, no seeking out sound source, a cease or decline in babbling, or babbling is present but not progressing towards sounding more speech-like. No reaction to voices, even when being held. Visical signs can include being born with a missing or malformed ear. Possible signs of hearing loss, a school-aged child. Possible signs of hearing loss in a school-aged child could include not understanding spoken instructions, experience of frustration, or communication breakdowns, speech and language delays, low academic achievement, a need to look directly at the speaker to understand speech, cannot identify where sounds are coming from, exhaustion, behavioural or social difficulties. How is hearing loss detected? Currently in Australia, there are several measures to help detect hearing loss in children. All newborns are offered a hearing screening assessment and during the preschool years, child health nurse checks and kindergarten screenings are available. Parents or other professionals may also raise concern about a child's development. Any of these avenues may lead to a referral for comprehensive assessment by an audiologist. If a child has a medical diagnosis or syndrome associated with hearing loss, they will also usually be referred for hearing testing. Universal Newborn Screening. The Universal Newborn Hearing Screening Assessment is offered to newborns in hospital or at a clinic soon after birth. The child is tested by electronic means using, usually while asleep. It is a reliable method to detect permanent hearing loss above 25 decibels. There are some hearing losses, however, that this screening will not detect. These include single-sided hearing losses, hearing levels in the 15 to 25 decibel range, hearing loss acquired after the screening, or hearing loss that develops over time, called a progressive hearing loss. Prevalence, childhood hearing loss. This slide shows a photograph of a pair of hands holding an electronic device which sit close to a newborn baby asleep in a hospital crib. The device has wires coming out of it and are attached to an electrode on the baby's forehead and plastic caps cover the baby's ears. This is a typical setup for newborn hearing screening. According to statistics from Dahl and colleagues in 2013, permanent childhood hearing loss in Australia occurs in 1 to 1.2 per thousand live births, increasing to about 1.5 by three years of age. Prevalence, childhood onset, zero to 14 years. 
Access Economics 2006 report childhood loss in Australia between zero and four years as 1.2 per thousand live births and the prevalence of an acquired hearing loss between the ages of four and 14 occurs at 3.2 per thousand live births. This slide contains a photograph of a group of four teenage school children chatting and smiling. Standing apart and looking away from the group is a teenage girl holding school books. Prevalence, lifespan loss. The next slide is titled Prevalence, Lifespan Loss. It contains a photograph of a large group of adults and youth of mixed ages and ethnicity. They are wearing different colored tops and all smiling and looking at the camera. Around one in six Australians have some degree of hearing loss, either present at birth or occurring later in life. This one in six figure comes from an Access Economics report in 2006 and is a widely quoted figure for hearing loss prevalence in developed countries. Comorbidity. This slide titled Comorbidity, other diagnosis shows a photograph of a woman sitting on the floor holding a card with a picture on it. She is sitting opposite a little girl who is looking up at her. The little girl has features of Down syndrome. According to Fortnum and colleagues in 2002, 27.4% of children with hearing loss have at least one other diagnosis affecting health or development. 5.7% of children with hearing loss also have visual impairment. The significance and implication of a dual sensory impairment will be explored in preceding modules. Who diagnoses hearing loss? An audiologist is responsible for assessing hearing levels and making a diagnosis of type and degree of hearing loss. With regard to hearing, an ear, nose and throat surgeon, or ENT for short, is a specialist medical doctor responsible for assessing and treating the function and structure of the parts of the ear and may perform operations on the ear. As a significant percentage of hearing losses have a genetic cause, a geneticist may be involved to help identify or rule out the cause of someone's hearing loss. Causes of childhood deafness. One of the most common causes of childhood deafness is otitis media. This is the name for the buildup of fluid in the middle ear with or without infection, which prevents sound traveling through the ear. It can be treated and does not cause permanent hearing loss unless left untreated for prolonged periods. Other causes of childhood hearing loss include infection experienced by the mother during pregnancy, the most common one being congenital cytomegalovirus. Inherited genes, gene mutations and associated syndromes are another common cause of childhood hearing loss. The less common causes include disease or infection such as meningitis, noise, trauma or ear injury, ototoxic medications being medicines that cause damage to ear structures, most commonly the hair cells in the cochlea, such as some cancer treatments and certain types of antibiotics. Hearing loss is also associated with prematurity, low birth weight, neonatal jaundice and lack of oxygen at the time of birth. There are also a significant number of childhood hearing losses with unknown cause. Impact. Language. The title of this slide is Language Spoken and Signed. It shows a photograph of the torso of an adult signing who is facing a child wearing a cochlear implant. Hearing loss can result in delayed speech and language development. Most children with hearing losses are born to hearing families. Should such a child be learning sign language for communication, development here can also be delayed as family and friends may not know sign language. This slide titled Education, School and Employment shows a photograph of a child with a hearing aid reading a picture book. 
academic underachievement, poorer literacy levels and reduced employment opportunities are common outcomes for children with hearing loss. This slide titled Psychosocial Wellbeing provides a primary school age, um, shows a primary school age boy wearing hearing aids squatting on the floor of a classroom. Behaviour such as withdrawal from group activity and conversation is noted. Feelings of loneliness and isolation are reported at a higher rate, along with an increased prevalence of depression. Family. This slide pictures a mother and daughter facing each other playing with a teddy bear. Facing away from them, an older sibling is slumped over the back of a chair looking despondent. While the diagnosis of deafness in a culturally deaf family can be welcomed, a child with a hearing loss in a hearing family can be associated with high levels of grief and stress. Meeting the child's communication needs are challenging and loss of work days to appointments and therapies are reported. Hearing devices. When a hearing loss is identified, audiologists will usually prescribe a type of hearing device to amplify sounds to give the person with the hearing loss access to some of the sounds their hearing loss prevents them from hearing. There are multiple types of hearing aids which sit in or behind the ear, or even on the body or spectacles, which pick up sound and amplify it to levels set by the audiologist. The sound travels through the ear in the way described earlier in the presentation. Other types of hearing aids can vibrate the bone behind the ear. Others can send the sound signal to the opposite ear. Hearing devices can also be implanted into the ear and head. The cochlear implant contains a speech processor that sits on the outside of the body or head and passes sound to an electronic device that is put under the skin behind the ear. An electrode connected to the device is inserted into the inner ear, which sends electrical sound signals to the auditory nerve. Brainstem implants can improve hearing in patients with poorly functioning auditory nerves. Implants convert sound into electrical impulse that st stimulate the brain directly, bypassing the auditory nerve. An assist uh, an assistive listening device is a different type of hearing device, generally used by people when they only want help with hearing in particular situations. For example, a set of headphones to hear music or television. An FM system relays sound from a microphone in close proximity to a speaker and relays sound to a hearing device such as a hearing aid or cochlear implant, resulting in a better quality speech signal for the listener. The next slide shows photographs depicting the growing trend of decorating hearing aids and cochlear implants. The first photograph shows a Batman themed cochlear implant and an Iron Man themed hearing aid. The next photograph shows a purple hearing aid with sparkles in the ear of a girl. The ear mould sitting in the ear canal is striped white, hot pink, bright blue and bright green. The third photograph shows a baby doll with a bald head and a bright pink hearing aid. The final photograph shows the head of a Tinkerbell doll with a bright pink cochlear implant. Deaf themes and characters with hearing loss are increasingly being incorporated into storybooks and film. Gradually, hearing loss and deafness are being openly acknowledged, recognised, accepted and understood. Early intervention. Professions involved in providing treatment and therapies for children with hearing loss include audiologist, speech pathologist and or sign language services. In Australia these can be accessed via some therapy services and some educational providers. Tailored educational services provide teachers of the deaf as a significant portion of children with hearing loss will have co-occurring conditions, an allied health team may also be involved. For those wanting support in developing their identity as a deaf or hard of hearing person, a mentor may be involved to support them as they navigate through different life experiences. To conclude this presentation, I would like to finish with a few quotes. By Moller in 2015. 
In the absence of additional diagnosis, children with hearing loss with access to hearing technology, special education and sign language may be able to participate at school and in social activities on an equal basis with their peers with normal hearing. From the 2010 Senate report, Hear Us, Inquiry into Hearing Health in Australia. Hearing loss can lead people to isolate themselves and deny the rest of society their talents and creative ideas. The lost pro productivity and revenue caused by early retirement or underemployment is a tangible loss to all Australians. From Cullis in 2014. The ability to hear sound is not what makes a person whole. It is not what gives a person their personality. The ability to hear sound is not what determines a person's intelligence and it does, doesn't have to limit one's life. Perhaps not enough hearing people take note of the deaf community members living happy lives around them. There are plenty of successful business owners, artists and athletes who use sign language to communicate. That concludes the Deaf, Deaf, Hard of Hearing module. References for this presentation can be found on the following eight slides. A Word document of the references will also accompany this video on the Deaf Blind Information Australia website, which is located at www.deafblindinformation.org.au. Project officers can be reached by email at info at deafblindinformation.org.au.